Hey everyone, I'm Jason, and this is your commentary on Matthew chapter 24. This chapter is all about the end times, or eschatology. It's broken down into eight sections. The first part, the disciples ask Jesus about the end times. They actually ask two questions. First is about the temple in Jerusalem, and the second is about the world as a whole. Jesus starts by answering about the temple. He talks about warning against false prophets. He tells them that there will be persecution and that there will be the destruction of the temple. Then he kind of mirrors those ideas and he talks about false messiahs in the world and false prophets. He warns against judgment and suffering that's going to occur and he ends with the days of Noah, that there'll be a final destruction once and for all. The very last section, Jesus summarizes everything using the image of a master and a slave, where the master goes away and the slave does not know when he's going to return. Jesus warns us to stay vigilant and to stay faithful. Jesus left the temple. He was walking away when his disciples came up to him. They wanted to call his attention to the temple buildings. Do you see all these things? Jesus asked. What I'm about to tell you is true. Not one stone here will be left on top of another. Every stone will be thrown down. Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives. There the disciples came to him in private. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming? What will be the sign of the end? So the disciples are asking two questions. They're saying, what will be the sign of your coming? And what will be the sign of the end? Now, if you want to do a quick Google search, look up 70 AD Jerusalem. And you see that when Jesus says that the temple is going to be destroyed and not one stone will be left on another, he is telling the truth. This is prophecy. The Romans actually attacked Jerusalem in 70 AD, and they set a torch to the temple, which melted the gold. The only way to get the gold out of the temple was to actually take the stones apart because the gold had melted down in between them. Jesus answered, Keep watch. Be careful that no one fools you. Many will come in my name. They will claim, I am the Messiah. They will fool many people. You will hear about wars. You will also hear people talking about future wars. Don't be alarmed. Those things must happen, but the end still isn't here. Nation will fight against nation, Kingdom will fight against kingdom. People will go hungry. There will be earthquakes in many places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. So Jesus is warning them not to be deceived, but to look for the signs uh, that he's giving them, letting them know uh, what's coming up, and that they should be vigilant in this. Then people will hand you over to be treated badly and killed. All nations will hate you because of me. At that time, many will turn away from their faith. They will hate each other. They will hand each other over to their enemies. Many false prophets will appear. They will fool many people. Because evil will grow, most people's love will grow cold. But the one who remains strong in the faith will be saved. This good news of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world. It will be a witness to all nations. Then the end will come. So Jesus is warning them not only against the false messiahs and false prophets, but against persecution, that things are going to get bad before the end comes. The prophet Daniel spoke about the hated thing that destroys. Someday you will see it standing in the holy place. The reader should understand this. Then those who are in Judea should escape to the mountains. No one on the housetop should go down into the house to take anything out. No one in the field should go back to get their coat. How awful it would be in those days for pregnant women. How awful for nursing mothers. Pray that you will not have to escape in winter or on the Sabbath day. There will be a terrible suffering in those days. It will be worse than any other from the beginning of the world until now. And there will never be anything like it again. So Jesus is using the signs here and a lot of prophetic language is cyclical in nature, that the same prophecy can actually be fulfilled over and over again, each time with 
increased intensity. So how do we know that Jesus is referring to the temple and Jerusalem in 70 AD and not to the end end times? Well, he's using very specific words here when he talks about then those who are in Judea should escape to the mountains. Or when he says, pray that will not have to escape in winter or on the Sabbath day. So he's speaking directly to a Jewish culture. And so it ties it back to what's coming up specifically for them. Now there's still warnings and we're going to see how these are mirrored in the fulfilling of the larger prophecy later on with the final end times. So Jesus is talking about the destruction of the temple here. And then he says, If the time had not been cut short, no one would live. But because of God's chosen people, it will be shortened. At that time, someone may say to you, Look, here is the Messiah, or there he is. Do not believe it. False messiahs and false prophets will appear. They will do great signs and miracles. They will try to fool God's chosen people, if possible. See, I have told you ahead of time. So if anyone tells you, he is a long way out in the desert, do not go out there. Or if anyone says, he is deep inside the house, do not believe it. Lightning that comes from the east can be seen in the west. It will be the same when the Son of Man comes. The vultures will gather wherever there is a dead body. Just as Jesus warned against the false prophets and the false messiahs beforehand, he's doing the exact same thing here, but now it's in context of after the destruction of the temple. Right after the terrible suffering of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not shine, the stars will fall from the sky, the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Then the sign of the man will appear in heaven. At that time, all the people of the earth will mourn. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. At that time, all the peoples of the earth will mourn. They will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven. He will come with power and great glory. He will send his angels with a loud trumpet call. They will gather his chosen people from all four directions. They will bring them from one end of the heavens to the other. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things happening, you know that the end is near. It is right at the door. What I'm about to tell you is true. The people living now will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. When Jesus returns, he's going to return in power and glory. And that's what it means when it says he's riding on the clouds. But all the other times that we see something riding on the clouds. It always talks about the power. The first time that Jesus came, he came as a baby in order to be a savior. But the second time that he comes, he's going to come as a judge and a king. But no one knows about that day or hour. Not even the angels in heaven know. The Son does not know. Only the Father knows. Remember how it was in the days of Noah. It will be the same when the Son of Man comes. In the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking. They were getting married. They were giving their daughters to be married. They did all those things right up to the day Noah entered the ark. They knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be when the Son of Man comes. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. So keep watch. You do not know on what day your Lord will come. You must understand something. Suppose the owner of the house knew what time of night the robber was coming. Then he would have kept watch. He would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready. The Son of Man will come at an hour when you don't expect him. I find it amusing when people try and say that they know when Jesus is going to come again. Because he very clearly here states that no one knows. The angels don't know. Humans don't know. The Son doesn't even know. Because he's waiting for the Father to send him. So if Jesus himself does not know when he's coming back again, how is it that anyone here can tell you 
when to expect him. This entire passage is about us not knowing when he's going to return, and that we should be living in faithfulness every day in anticipation of his return. Suppose a master puts one of his slaves in charge of the other slaves in his house. The slave's job is to give them their food at the right time. The master wants a faithful and wise slave for this. It will be good for the slave if the master finds him doing his job when the master returns. What I'm about to tell you is true. The master will put that slave in charge of everything he owns. But suppose that slave is evil. Suppose he says to himself, my master is staying away a long time. Suppose he begins to beat the other slaves, and suppose he eats and drinks with those who drink too much. The master of that slave will come back on a day the slave doesn't expect him. He will return at an hour the slave does not know. Then the master will cut him to pieces. He will send him to the place where pretenders go. There people will weep and grind their teeth. Jesus is using the exact same language that he used in the previous chapter talking about the pretenders and saying that they will weep and grind their teeth and that represents hell both the sorrow and sadness that will face in there but also the anger and bitterness to god that will have there as well so this chapter is all about uh, the study of the end times it's eschatology and there's a multitude of views about eschatology there's amillennialism, premillennialism, postmillennialism, dispensationalism, futurism, preterism, and idealism, and there's several others that I probably forgot as well. Each of these views tries to interpret prophetic scripture, apocalyptic literature. The millennialist ones look at a thousand-year period and how Jesus will come again at different points in time for the church and for the rest of the world. And you see, dispensationalism is all about different ages that we go through. That there was the age of the temple, the Jewish people, and then there's the age of the church. Futurism says that all of the prophecies in Scripture are to take place in the future, not currently at the time that they were being written. Preterism looks at the prophecies as happening in the past. And we do see some prophecy when people speak the words of God, not only are they talking about the future, they're also talking about the present and even the past. So there's some legitimacy there. And then idealism says that it's apocalyptic literature. It uses symbols that we should not be taking it literally, but rather looking at the symbols as pointing to something even greater. There's some validity to all of these views. And it's important to note that these are not salvific in nature. You probably already hold to one of these views, even if you haven't studied it. Just if you've been in the church long enough, you pick up on how other people interpret things. Since they're not salvific, I'm not going to address them all in this particular video. There's just not enough time. I would love to go over them more in depth. Uh, therefore, I will be teaching about them over in our community board. And you can find a link to our community board in the description below. The absolute main point, regardless of which view you hold, is that things are bad and they're probably going to get worse. But God is faithful and he's going to return. So we too need to stay faithful. That is it for our commentary. On Matthew chapter 24. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you guys next time.